Thank you for joining the Ones Changing the World podcast. And today I'm delighted and honored to have with me Mr. Parag Dole, who is the Managing Director at Investors, Investors India that's rebranded as Athira Ventures. Athira is an Indian-focused early-stage venture capital firm that invests in entrepreneurs building sustainable tech-focused companies. And they are ready with their fourth fund to explore the opportunity in Web3, blockchain, and deep tech. So Mr. Parag, really appreciate you taking time and being part of the podcast. Why don't we start with a small, brief introduction and background? So I grew up in a, a very, a very small university town in one corner of Uttarakhand, uh, and and like like most decent students, uh, wanted to. I mean, was basically told you are either an engineer, a doctor, or a failure. So not wanting to be a failure <laughs> and not being very good at biology, I, I decided to to choose engineering as my path. Not because I loved it, but but that was that was one of the routes open. So went to IIT, uh, did my mechanical engineering, or maybe I should say I did get a degree. I didn't do my mechanical engineering, but uh, and and then realized in life that. But at some time, you have to get serious and, and went to IIM after that and really focused there on, on, uh, on specific areas that I wanted to learn. And I think I matured there a lot. Uh, got into the venture capital business uh, very early. Uh, I mean, this is 1993 that I'm talking about. The venture capital business in India was about five years old then. The whole industry used to manage fifty million dollars. Five zero. That is a million, by the way. So it was so small when we used to go out at that time and, and call on companies to say that we we are venture capital providers. They would ask us what interest rate do we charge. So it was it was those days. Uh, so grew from there. Uh, went to the corporate VC arms of GE and Intel after that. Before uh, joining this fund, uh, as you said, it is called Inventus India till recently, till we branded on May twenty sixth of this year, and and that's what we do: uh, early stage investing in uh, in across. Uh, you were uh, you did say deep tech, uh, Web three, and others, but yes, a slightly broader firm in terms of consumer internet, software as a service service, deep tech and fit tech as well. But technology companies serving the real real world is what we do. So uh, the rebranding, what, what was the reason? Why did you uh, rebrand from Inventus to Athira Ventures? And uh, or do, do talk about your new for fourth fund, you know, which is a $116 million fund. And, and how difficult was, you know, possibly maybe you could share your insights on how difficult was it for you to raise a, a fund during a period such as right now, you know, the, the downturn or recession that we all talk about. Uh, so, uh, first, uh, coming to the rebranding, so we started life as a U.S. India firm. Uh, so, three of us in the valley and three of us uh, based here. That's how we ran Fund 1 and Fund 2. Uh, after, after a point in time, uh, in 2017, 2018, uh, we decided to restructure the firm into two parts. Uh, yeah. In, in went to Silicon Valley, where our three ex-partners from Fund 1 and Fund 2 uh, ran it independently and we ran Inventus 3 India Fund as we call, uh, called it uh, on our own. Uh, the three of us based out of Bangalore would pick Samir and I. Uh, so uh, the, the restructuring of the firm in terms of becoming an India focused firm only, we used to invest both in the US and India in Fund 1 and Fund 2, happened way back in 2017-2018 uh, itself and we raised this fund of, of 369 crores and have invested it in about 13 companies uh, till date. Just to clarify, we have not raised our new fund, but have started raising the new fund. Uh, so, so somehow these, these news organizations, the, uh, the newspapers or, or what have you, uh, trend, uh, tend not to take rebranding as a, as a big enough big enough news item. So we decided to throw in the fact that we are raising a fund for. So uh, we have just applied to SEBI for, for permission uh, to, to start raising the fund. 
fund. So technically, we have not raised it. Uh, the right time to announce a fund is after you've raised it, but because of this constraint, we had to we had to announce it this way. So that's that's where we are. From the fund three experience, different times, uh, it was it was a middling kind of experience in the sense that it was not very easy, not very hard either. Uh, going into this, I think yes, the headwinds are there, uh, but we have track record performance. The Indian ecosystem has grown. There are lots of investors now, lots of interest in India, and ours is a ten-year business. So to that extent, we don't we anticipate people to uh, on on the LP side, which are our investors, limited partners as they are known in this industry. They they, they recognize that uh, these things uh, happen. Um, ups and downs are part of financial markets, and and uh, I, I think uh, the committed ones, uh, which we believe to be about 75, 80 percent, or the educated ones, the committed ones, uh, which we believe, as I said, is about 75 to 80 percent of a target segment, they will continue to invest in this asset class. Whether they choose us or not is, is a different question that, that uh, depends on us, how we present ourselves, what our data says, but they will continue to invest in this asset class. So, Post-COVID, there's some insane growth happening in the space of technology and 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 this is in the new frontier tech or exponential technology space you know i mean you know there's suddenly uh, uh, in the ar vr space uh, facebook which 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 was kind of championing the virtual reality uh, business has kind of you know completely rebranded uh, into you know from moved from being a social media company to a metaverse company you know and then there's this huge noise about you know the the web3 web3 company uh, uh, web web3 world you know of us transitioning from the web2 world to to the web3 web3 world and and and, and the reason i am pointing out about you know the post covid is because i think uh, before covid technology was there was always growing but i think because of covid technology is like really accelerated and all these frontier technologies are kind of converging you know and, and there is not one single technology according to me because I, I feel that most of these technologies are converging together. Like for example, VR, it's converging with 5G. 5G kind of powers it, you know, for it to become more uh, accessible uh, and then artificial intelligence with the avatars, I think is going to, digital avatars are going to power, you know, the metaverse, the uh, the NFTs, the blockchain is going to be the underlying layer of the Web3 and, and so on and so forth. So A, What's what's your views on this exponential growth of technology, which is still in a nascent stage? When do you see, you know, start, uh, when do you think you'll see companies actually, you know, uh, adding real world values in, in, in this space, which is in such a nascent stage? So, so uh, see, it is very difficult to predict precisely. Uh, I mean, I, I would be foolish to try and say this is specifically uh, when it will happen. But if I go back in history and let us say, uh, start with uh, with the internet uh, as as a revolution, so to speak, which started sometime in, let us say, Amazon, et cetera, the early Ebays and all of that started in 95, 96. Uh, the, the, uh, there was too much of enthusiasm as 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 uh, happens at times, and and then 2000 the crash happened for the next four years. Not much happened, but then the Facebooks etc. came along, and and that. So uh, so uh, as you rightly put it, the Goldilocks moment, as as they call it, the the uh, surrounding conditions, uh, so to speak, are just about right. Uh, not too hot, not too cold, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, uh, for uh, for things coming together in terms of uh, blockchain, as you mentioned, as a technology for decentralization of the web that will be the underlying uh, this thing isn't it and we invested in a company about about three years ago called coin earth based on this hypothesis so to speak so uh, uh, when when these things come together uh, and there might be uh, over excitement at times as as happened in crypto probably and and uh, consequently the crash etc cetera, etc cetera. Uh, so some of this will be there will be disillusionment etc cetera, etc cetera, might might come along i uh, god knows how long it will continue it is hard to predict but if there is strength in the underlying technology if you genuinely believe in it and the pieces fall in place if you look at between 2000 and 2004 when when 
when let's say Google and Facebook started taking off, one of the key things that happened there was a lot of optical fiber was put in place. Uh, so the bandwidths increased significantly uh, as a consequence, uh, and I'm talking those times, I'm not talking 5G and, and 4G and 3G, but, but I'm talking uh, 2000 to 2004, but, but the bandwidth to the home increased significantly, enabling the, uh, the Facebooks, et cetera, to start new business models, so to speak. And, and subsequently, the Snapchats, et cetera, come, uh, came, uh, came along. So uh, some of those moments, some of those moments in, in the history of technology, if you will, there are some Goldilocks moments. And maybe, just maybe, I don't know, as, as you said, this could be one of those moments for a decentralized web, so to speak. For example, we have invested in an in a augmented reality company. Okay, uh, they they make augmented reality toys. It's called Play Shifu. Uh, used to sell a lot through Amazon, etc. Now doing a lot of offline as well. Uh, whereas we had made a similar AR investment uh, in in 2009 2010, which was too too ahead of the curve. So that company didn't do well, isn't it? So for us, it is it is um, it is very important as VCs to to catch the inflection point at just about the right time. If you are five years too early, then you don't have the patience, you will uh, you lose patience and you lose it like we did with that investment that I talked about uh, from 2009. Uh, and uh, now in place you go on the other hand, uh, things are, uh, are picking up because people are using these technologies or devices available, it is powerful enough, et cetera, et cetera. Our connectivity is there and various other things, isn't it? Right, yeah, you rightfully pointed out, you know, it's it's very difficult to, you know, understand how these things kind of like, you know, spread out, you know, I mean, the, these most of these technologies, which is in a, a very nascent stage at this point in time. But yes, it could just be the right moment for it to completely explode because so far, uh, the, the ethos of the Web3 is, is very consumer friendly because so far, I mean, the Web2 model was, you know, extract value from the consumers, you know, extract all values. And, and here with the Web3, it, it, it says that it's going to be interoperable, decentralized, where, where, where the benefits is, is going to be very equally distributed and the consumer itself kind of plays ro a role in building the Web3 or the metaverse. So it, it sounds exciting, but I don't know how far one it kind of like you know all binds through how far this is true it, it's only i think possibly time will tell you know so i was reading the the news about this this fourth fan the fourth fund and it said that you, you uh, athira ventures is going to specifically focus on you know deep tech space tech you know the, the future of mobility web3 and blo blockchain I, is that the case would you like to elaborate on that so yes, even in Fund Three, for instance, we uh, we took a space tech bet, uh, a company called Pixel, founded by some two extraordinarily smart young guys, uh, smart in both senses of the term, uh, obviously IQ, but uh, also also business smarts as well. So, uh, so they, we we took that bet very early, about about two two and a half years ago uh, ago now. Uh, Coin Earth, I talked about briefly, which was a uh, used blockchain initially for supply chain applications. Now does it more for uh, for NFT? Playshifu, I briefly talked about, which is that augmented reality company, and we have a fourth one in the deep tech space called uh, called Euler Motors, which is electric vehicles, uh, three wheelers currently, eventually four wheelers for. Uh, for commercial applications, think about big, big basket flip card kind of people uh, using it. Or uh, so that's uh, those are the kind of technologies or usage of technology that is uh, that requires R and D spends. Deep tech basically says that it requires R and D spends. It requires you uh, two three years of development effort, isn't it? That is the difference between a deep tech company and let us say the typical application software company that we have uh, backed in the past. So uh, those kind of companies started emerging sometime in that uh, uh, 17, 18, 19 kind of a time frame. And I think with the decentralized web movement, so to speak, uh, that will happen more and more. And it is our, uh, our belief that 
uh, this segment of deep technology uh, will, will become an increasingly large proportion of, of what we do. Well, let us say even hardware for that matter. It's uh, while, while the value lies in software, India's ability to put a hardware solution together and, and with, with the uh, most of the value add being in the software, because hardware is now available, sensors are cheap, processors are cheap, everything is, is, is getting commoditized at that layer. Uh, but, but you can put these software solutions together just, just like uh, PlayShifu does, not only software, but a creative solution as well on top of it and, and develop new products. And that is, uh, we'll see more and more of such companies. If, if deep tech was 5% of the portfolio, 5% of the deal flow, uh, maybe two, three years back, it is beginning to get to 10, 15%. And I think that's going to happen more and more as we go along in time. Right. I, I hope that, uh, I mean, that grows because, you know, there's a fantastic movement happening and, and, and all of these deep tech s- startups, you know, whatever sector it is, whether it's AI, IoT, blockchain, augmented reality, virtual reality, Web3 or metaverse, I, I think this is becoming touching more lives and you know it's it's adding real world values now how it's going to shape up it, 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 is something that i think possibly time will tell but i think it's exciting times because the the these 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 technologies which were very nascent stage are starting to kind of you know i mean grow their uh, capabilities you know because of the, the the growth of technologies and and i'm glad that you know players such as yourself has been in this industry and fronting you know right from uh, space tech to augmented reality to blockchain to the future of mobility so so we need more more of the these you know invest uh, investors venture capital here in india because I, I, what happened with china was really really cool you know because i, I think maybe just 10 15 years back china was known a, as a copycat uh, nation you know and that's that 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 was that to it but i think the, the government put out an agenda that okay we need to you know back uh, or, or deep tech movement a, a, and then it suddenly exploded so so they, they don't just have software startups but they have some insanely awesome hardware startups also and uh, obviously india is known because of a great minds or engineers and, and yes we are lacking those hardware startups but i guess you know once there is more support from the ecosystem from the government investors such as yourself i, I think there'll be more and more deep tech startups creating you know really awesome products and solutions because i think there are a lot of youngsters who at least i come across are really pushing the boundaries you know they're asking deeper questions and, and, and saying why can't we do this you know and, and that's exciting because i guess you know when we when we breach that you know that okay if those guys are doing why can't we do it and can we do it better can we do it more frugally and, and can we scale that and and th- those are exciting questions but i guess you know we need a supportive ecosystem if the support ecosystem is supportive i, I think you know we we as a nation can become like really out out, out there uh, uh, do you as as athira ventures is there's an in, investment philosophy i'm sure you get uh, asked about it uh, a lot is is there's an investment uh, philosophy to athira ventures in, in investing and what matters most is, is it the founders is, is it a specific se- sector or, or a stage uh, uh, that you guys are most uh, most interested in so uh, for us, it is uh, founder matters uh, the most, uh, honestly, because it is a long journey. It is a journey of ups and downs, etc. So uh, that that founder's ability to uh, passion and persistence is, is the way I, I classify it. So those two things are the most important things in in our mind. When we uh, when we see a passion for solving a problem which is large enough for us VCs to be interested in it, and a founder whose persistence enough has displayed persistence in the past or has it in his genes in his or her genes is 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 that combination that we are looking for uh, when we are uh, uh, when we are going out to back so uh, those are some of the key things uh, i would say that is that is required for uh, for this thing yes the ecosystem has to be there it can't be too ahead of the curve all those things i talked about but but uh, increasingly many of those problems are getting solved in india uh, the ecosystem is improving the government is being supportive space tech for instance the government is very very supportive isn't it so so uh, to that extent in hardware hopefully it will come along it's slowly coming along but not at the speed at which china does things but it's 
slowly coming along, hopefully it will speed up over time and, and gain momentum, gain further momentum. Some of us, uh, there are uh, funds like uh, uh, Yarnest, uh, Pi Ventures, uh, there's a GrowX who focus uh, really hard on deep tech, for instance. So uh, there is there is a set of VCs also coming together. So things are, things are falling in place. It's still not mainstream mainstream uh, i should say but uh, but 10 years later 5 years later just like with saas let us say 10 years back it was clearly not or even 5 years back was not mainstream today it is isn't it so so that's that's how i uh, i predict things to be in 5 to 10 years deep tech is going to be amongst uh, amongst one of the a large portion of the venn diagram of even a generalist fund uh, any any of the generalist funds so that's that's how it is it is going to be or, and it's going to be a significant portion of the deal flow as well everybody talks about i mean every, at least all of the top vc firms uh, you know have put out manifestos on the recession the downturn you know so is there a specific advice to founders you know startups you know how to tide through this uh, funding winter so what I would say is uh, differentiate between the controllables and the uncontrollables. Okay, the macro economy is a is an uncontrollable. Uh, you, you can't do anything about it. So why why fret too much about it? You can just be reactive to it. Yes, if you are burning a lot of money and and uh, some of that burn was not making sense, obviously cut it out. So take those uh, take those calls, but. But if you uh, were uh, intent on solving a deep problem and remain as committed to it, uh, see this as I see this as temporary. Uh, and this will change. And these things, storms come and storms go. This is this is another one of those storms. Just like the last three years, uh, 2001 uh, rolled back uh, for those three years, 2018 to 2021 was not normal either because there was a bit too much euphoria that, that people accept uh, today. Uh, this is also not normal. Uh, just just getting into uh, getting into a a sustenance mode and and kind of uh, be a cockroach and somehow survive is not is not the advice i would i would give today yes uh, uh, at the beginning of the pandemic i would say that because we didn't know what the pandemic was about but the world has seen many uh, many recessions even if it's still not a recession even if it comes along world has seen many recessions it goes off after after two three years if it is a 10 15 year journey of building a company two three years is in my view a blip so uh, so use your money carefully for sure uh, during this time but if you're solving a real uh, deep problem that a pro customer faces and think you can extract value out of it in terms of uh, returns to yourself uh, stay committed stay uh, stick to the cause and and this too shall pass so so that's that would be my message right so you know you you have kind of you know put your hands and invested across you know the tech spectrum you know right from you know saas to your deep tech is there a sunrise sector or, or you know something you think could be the sunrise sector in in the next few years our philosophy has always been uh, we have uh, we have defined we are throwing our net wide uh, let's see what what comes in and if it if that founder plus market combination looks exciting enough then you you pull the trigger that's been the approach so asking me about what that uh, what that technology uh, movement or whatever is going to be i'm i I'm not even going to try to predict. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm just going to listen to a lot of people. Uh, what makes sense? Uh, I I'll test that hypothesis with people who are experts and and take a view. Uh, that's that's the approach that we have taken to the problem. Some people say that okay, we'll do only SaaS or we'll do only deep tech or maybe only uh, artificial intelligence. We are not in that camp. We are broader investors. Uh, so throw the net wider and and don't predict. Uh, it's putting the cart before the horse, isn't it? The entrepreneur knows much more than you will ever <laughs> about a segment. So why why bother about it? So so yes, you see some trends. Elect electric vehicles is a trend that you see, isn't it? That is evident to anybody who reads the newspapers. So so uh, that you see and uh, that you take advantage of and and predict. But uh, but uh, would I say uh, Tesla started in two thousand two or something like that? Would I be an investor 
in Tesla in 2005, uh, uh, yeah, that would be too early in <laughs> making that mistake. So uh, uh, going back to that mistake that I mentioned on the AI side. So, so uh, to that extent, there is a right time to invest and we, we try to uh, catch that right time, if you will. We can't be too early, too late. Yeah. Could you talk about what makes uh, I grabbing pitch deck? So uh, insightful uh, insights, especially on the customer side, uh, uh, that you have derived thanks to your experience or your exposure to the customer base is is what we are looking for. Somebody who's um, who understands that problem, the deep problem, is solving a, uh, what we call a, is is uh, is producing a, a painkiller, not a vitamin, uh, and not a good to have, but a essential to have kind of a uh, kind of a solution. Uh, that's that's we are what we are looking for. Bound uh, started by a team that has both the expertise on this side and the willingness to uh, to do this for the long haul, and and is and lives and breathes that problem. See. Uh, when somebody gets obsessed over a problem, that's that's when you um, that's when you want to back that person. Now, all of us get obsessed about certain things, and and when we get obsessed about it, we we achieve, it, isn't it? That's what who who we are. That's what we are. At least the well endowed or reasonably smart amongst us are. We we want to uh, we want to go after that problem and solve that problem. That's the kind of people we want to see and back. And long term thinking. It's it's not valuation tomorrow. It is the it is the end goal. If a company lists or when you sell your company, that's that that delayed gratification of of living through uh, a recession if it comes along and and uh, keeping your head and keeping your head down and 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 working through it through tough times when people leave you when you don't have enough money to execute to it at the speed that you want to uh, living through all of those days uh, for that price at the end that's the mentality that we are seeking and that's the kind of uh, profile we are seeking there's a question from our listener. His name is Aditya Mani. He's the founder of Yologram, which is like a metaverse startup. So he's asking that, do you see a role of playable commerce, you know, these gamified experiences in shopping? So I, I don't know. I haven't thought about that, uh, that problem. So I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't offer an opinion there. Honestly, I, I don't know enough. Uh, I don't know. If uh, startups want to reach out to you, where can they reach out? LinkedIn is a very good place. Uh, I have kind of a unique name. Uh, that's that's what Google tells me. So just type out my name on LinkedIn and and uh, write in a message or parag at uh, thera a t h e r a v p dot com. So those those two modes uh, work very well uh, for me. If you had to kind of predict, you know uh, what. India would look like it in the next 10 years or what you would want India to look like in the 10 years what you would uh, say so what I would say is that uh, maybe it, it will take longer but I, what I would uh, want to see is uh, if you look at the American stock exchange today uh, five of the top 10 companies are technology companies isn't it we are not there yet. Uh, we are very early days. It's unfair to compare uh, that society to ours. Technology is just penetrating our society. It's just taking over our daily lives or helping us with our daily lives. So it's, it's somewhat unfair to compare. But that's the uh, that's the place you would want to go when there are five out of ten companies are technology-led companies instead of uh, with, with due respect to the Infosys and Reliances of the world. Those are not technology companies companies that we as uh, services companies technology services companies but i'm talking about technology product companies uh, they they that's that's where you you want the society to to get to uh, there are there's some challenges obviously disposable income etc cetera, etc cetera, challenges poverty in our countries challenges how much uh, 50 percent of a country can't uh, is thinking of uh, uh, much much more basic things than than let's say uh, technology we we uh, sit here speaking in what is a foreign language and, <laughs> and talk about technology but 50 percent of that uh, of our uh, countrymen uh, can't even afford to uh, listen to a discussion like this honestly isn't it it's not relevant to them so so uh, whereas uh, the the world is slightly different in the western places so uh, as as india progresses as india gets richer i think 
uh, technology will become an increasingly large part of our lives and i hope to see uh, some some companies <laughs> emerge emerge from that so okay anyway i'll let that be Thanks. Right. Thank you, Parag. Really appreciate you taking time and being part of the podcast. You, you, you rightfully pointed out. You know there are so many problems in India. We, we've got a country of one point three billion people, and you, and you said, I mean, you know, people really do not have the privilege because they do not understand about what technology can is doing or can do in 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 possibly the future. Yeah, and and that itself is is such a huge uh, you know opportunity over there you know if we can you know educate that population make them understand so those guys are also enabled and empowered to build or think about you know building startups building products you know building services or solutions which can you know reach out to that you know 50% or or, or more of the population which are not looking at this because i guess that's the only way we can get to you know in the lines of maybe like in us or china because i think somehow india is doing the all of the right things we've got the greatest minds over here uh, and and most of them are seem to be migrating you know because you know we we've got the 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 top companies of the world have indian ceos you know i hope i, I think it's time in that you know we there's there's a reverse migration of sorts and we in india start building those those big companies and 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 solving those those, those you know uh, creating products which can reach to you know the, the mass and i i really hope it it might sound a little idealistic and a little way off but i hope that you know i mean we come to a point where india is known for you know not just you know software companies but also hardware companies and not just the companies which are here in india but which is globally known you know Uh, so i i hope and, and and i'm sure you guys will play a, a big role in in something like that so thank you no, no, really yeah, companies like skype uh, companies like skype companies like airbnb etc etc let's say these are uh, there's no reason to believe that these kind of companies will not emerge from india uh, it's, it's it should uh, it should happen and uh, it is my strong belief at least by the time i retire from venture capital i i hope that happens where we create a world technology brand and and that's uh, ideally i fund it but i uh, i honestly couldn't uh, care uh, that much about that aspect but but i uh, hope that i live to see a day where where an indian technology brand is is talked about in in, in those terms uh, so to speak so where it becomes our so I I, I take I, I take those last words I mean like really seriously and I really hope that that's the case that we will see uh, a Indian company become global because I guess we've got the right ingredients everything is right it just all just needs to you know come together so thank you really appreciate you taking time and being part of the podcast wish you the very and, and the team at Atira for the for the fourth fund and I'm sure there'll be there'll be like a bunch of startups which will get enabled and empowered by by you you guys have been at the forefront Uh, you know right from pixel to play shifu to coiner to yula motors uh, keep on doing the amazing thing that you're doing uh, and empowering the and enabling the ecosystem so thank you once again for being part of the podcast and to my listeners if you like what you see in here then please press the subscribe button until next time see you guys bye thank you really appreciate this thank you thank you very much bye